Hey guys, how's it going? Long time no see. So, yeah, um, as usual, I don't upload very regularly. You know, I try to film what I can if I find it, if I think that it'll be something interesting, um, like track days or like any type of major mod or anything like that, but uh, as of recently, I haven't really been doing much because I've been on furlough. So, uh, I've been doing a lot of working at home and just kind of sitting around the house and not spending a lot of money. Um, so, um, I haven't really done a whole lot to the car. Uh, I've Missed a couple of track days I kind of planned on going to. One of the reasons why I haven't gone to the track, I, I was going to go yesterday, but uh, the car developed a spark blowout issue again, uh, even with the coil and plug conversion that I just recently did. Part of the reason is probably because I've turned it up from, uh, you know, 19 to 22 to, I tried to run 25, 25, 26 is about where it was, and right around 6,500, you know, starts to get some pretty aggressive uh, misfiring and things like that, so... Um, you know, Fab9 says their kit isn't intended for high boost. It's, you know, I think they say like 19 PSI or something like that. And if you go beyond that, you're supposed to... They recommend going with the AEM Twin Fire setup. Um, so, I kind of, like, glossed over that part. You know, I was like, alright, well, if I need to, I'll go ahead and I'll get the Twin Fire Ignition Module. Um, it's 340 something dollars, so it's not really the most cost-effective way to, you know, it's not the most cost-effective thing to do, um, or it's the most, it's not the most cost-effective method. Uh, you know, if you're going to go coil unplug, uh, for $349, there's a lot of other options that you could do besides spending $270 on a coil unplug kit and then spending another $340 on top of that. Uh, you could just do LS coils or DIY Autotune has some really nice uh, coils with igniters built into it. They're pretty simple to wire up. Um, the Toyota coils, people tend to not really have problem blowing out spark on those, even though Fab9 says that um, the Toyota coils aren't, they don't produce as strong of a spark as people think they do. So, so yeah, I'm going to try some things. Uh, I'm going to check the voltage going to the igniter, make sure that, it's a, that I actually have a good voltage source. If the voltage is lower than what it should be, I'll wire up a relay that goes directly to the battery to make sure that the coils are getting as much power as they possibly can be getting. Um, if that doesn't really solve the issue, uh, I'll probably just be ripping this out and selling it, and um, probably either building my own kit from parts from DIY Autotune or possibly doing the LS coil kits. I don't really like the LS coil because then you have to find a place to mount the brackets and you still have spark plug wires. And it's just not a very clean looking thing, but it works. Uh, same thing with DIY Autotune coil, same thing. You, you have to, they have to be mounted to a bracket somewhere and you have to have spark spark plugs that go from the coil packs to the, to the spark plugs. There are other pencil coils that are, that, uh, that are out there that probably provide you know, a better setup. I mean, I guess, I mean, I guess I could just go ahead and spend the 350 bucks on the, or 380 bucks or however the frick much it is on the AEM Twin Fire, or I could try another CDI uh, ignition module and see if that helps, but, but yeah, kind of, sort of regretting going with the Fab 9 kit. I'm not saying it's a bad product. It's a great product if you're on a stock ECU because it works with the stock ECU. Um, it's a great product if you go with like the plug and play setup and you're not running a whole lot of boost if you're like 200 horsepower or something like that, 250-ish, you know, but, um, but yeah, it's really not a, a high performance mod, so it's kind of a, a bizarre thing, you know, I mean, I am pushing it pretty hard, I mean, we were talking about 26 PSI, it's probably close to 400 horsepower on E85, so, um, I think E85 is known to kind of cause some spark issues. It's a little harder to ignite, so uh, that could be an issue. Maybe I could try diluting the E85 going down to like E40 or E50 or something like that. But anyways, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test the voltage at the coil pack and see if it's what it should be. And if it's not, like I said, I'm going to wire up a relay that will send power directly to the coil pack from the battery. We'll see how we'll see how that goes. So first thing I'm gonna do is establish a baseline, meaning I'm just gonna measure what the battery voltage is. <laughs> sound it sounds sounds fancier when you you know. Anyways, just gonna establish a baseline, 
we are at 12.5. So we're at 12.5. That should be what we should be getting at the coil. If it's less than that, it means we've got some voltage drop. 12.36. So not a lot. I mean, we're talking, yeah, I mean, we're talking like 10 millivolts. It's not really a lot. Let's see what we get when the cars are running. So there is some slight voltage drop. Not a lot though, but I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is just go ahead and wire in that relay anyways. And then that way that will be off my mind. Alright, so basically, all right, so what I'm going to do here is basically the same thing I did with the fuel pump is uh, I'm going to just wire up a relay so this way the um, this way the uh, ignition module has as strong of a voltage source as possible. You know, it'll basically be drawing straight from the battery. Um, the purpose of the relay is just so that it's a switched source. Um, the source that, that it gets its power from now is a switched source, but I don't know where I don't know exactly where it's getting that power from. You know, so it's going from the battery to the power distribution through some fuses through a relay probably being tapped off of a bunch of other stuff possibly through some old corroded connections so I mean you know all that stuff adds up and can cause voltage drop um, this way I can give the module a direct path to the battery while it, with it still being switched I can use that original switch that original switch source to trigger the relay so so I'm just gonna wire this up real quick and then uh Give her another go.
All right, so to explain my findings um, with this, so before I added the relay, so before I added the relay, there was about like 10 milliamps difference, 10, 20 milliamps difference between what was, between what the battery was putting out and what was being received at the ignition coils. 10 milliamps isn't really a whole lot. Um, I noticed that when I revved the engine, uh, that voltage differential kind of grew. Um, so I, I can imagine at 7,000 RPM where they're really working, that it may may have gotten a lot worse. You know, um, there may have been a higher voltage drop as the coils began to draw more current. Um, I noticed that when I revved it this time at idle, there was absolutely no voltage difference. It stayed rock solid. So, so maybe that fixed it. But of course, the only way to know, take it for a spin. Roads are a little wet, but. Let's see what happens. So seems like that kind of fixed the problem. Uh, there's still some blowout. I can feel a little bit. Of, it's not nearly as bad. Before it was vinyl. I mean, it sounded like it was backfiring out out the intake before. I mean, it was backfiring bad um, or uh, blowing out bad. Yeah, it, it was missing really bad before. Um, so yeah, by giving the module a little more juice, it definitely helps move things out a little bit, but still not perfect. Uh, I still don't think I can go much past 22 PSI on this coil set. Uh, I've already got the plugs gapped down really far. I think they're down to 0 0.02. I could probably try like 0 0.018 or something, but that's a really narrow spark gap. So if you go too narrow, it's just as bad as being too wide. So uh, it's a band-aid solution for a weak ignition system. But yeah, like I said, I'm still getting some spark blowout, so I'll probably just end up turning the boost down. I'll just deal with, you know, my lousy 121 mile an hour trap for now. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah, so, so, like I said, what I'll probably do is either uh, piece together a completely different coil and plug setup, or I will just go ahead and bite the bullet and spend the nearly 400 bucks on the AEM twin fire module, or explore some other, um, uh, ignition modules and see what's out there. So I don't think AEM's the only one, only person making them. There's there's got to be plenty of other setups out there. So so yeah. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. Uh, hopefully, I'll be getting back to the track sometime soon. I'm gonna shoot for Wednesday. That's the twenty something, twenty ninth. Yeah, so I'm gonna try and shoot for the track on Thursday or Wednesday. It's the thirtieth. So, uh, see if I can get that 11. I know it's in it. I was hoping, like I said, I was hoping to crank the boost up a little bit and ensure I get that 11, but I guess I'll just have to actually nail that launch and nail those shifts and have a nice, efficient run and hit that goal. So, that's pretty much it. Until next time.